One clap is all I get. <laughs> Victory Gardens. It's once for breakfast. Exactly. Yes. change is not going to come to us wrapped and labeled as climate. It's going to come to us in weather extremes and in disasters. And the more communities can prepare for dealing with such weather extremes, build their resilience, the easier it will be for those communities to face whatever climate change ultimately um, is, is seen as throwing at them. doesn't make it. There's a lot of time in all of these things spent around uh, campfires of various sorts, drinking lots of coffee and talking about how the world works. So there was that kind of exchange and in many cases it was able to highlight things that the Western scientists weren't even thinking about and it inspired them to start looking and collecting data in those areas. But that story rarely makes it into the scientific record. So, I come to this whole climate change, dealing with fossil fuels and mitigation and trying to, to, to deal with those issues personally. I mean, these are, this, I take this really personally. And I know that it's, it's had health effects. For some of you don't know, I've had two heart attacks in doing this work, and I've attributed to PTSD, pre-traumatic stress syndrome. <laughs> here, but we don't get to hear about it, and we'd love to. So if folks can send us letters or uh, you know information or updates on things that have occurred through here, that would be a great help, I think, for us in showing this institution that they're doing a very good job bringing Native peoples and Indigenous peoples together. of the sea, the acidification of the oceans. Most people have no idea that that's what's going on or that that's what we're even capable of. So I think building human capacity, we have to become very clear and honest and transparent about the powers of our capacity as we hold them today and use them far more responsibly.